برنامه نانگلا سرخ رو نگاه میکنید مجله اجتماعی سیاسی که به زبان های انگلیسی و فارسی روی کانال جدید پخش میشه سلام به همگی من مریم نمازی هم و من فایبرز و پویا هستم در برنامه هفته مصاحبه داریم با کیت پورتیس بود از رهبران انجمن سکولوریست های بریتانیا در زم در رابطه با آتش پس در سوریه وضعیت پناهجویان سوریه ای و افغانی در ایران فتوای احمقانه علیه مناظره تلویزیونی و زنان و موسیقی در ایران با ما باشید خبر این هفته اینه که این دوشنبه در سوریه آتش بسی صورت گرفته خب این خبر خوبیه در خود به خاطر اینکه اجازه میده که کسایی که مورد محاصره قرار گرفتن بتونن دسترسی داشته باشن به امکانات اولیه ولی خب مشخصا این به هیچ وجه کافی نیست و یه واقعا یه وضعیتی الان تو سوریه داره صورت میگیره که باید به انتها برسه به خصوص چون یه تراژدی وسیع انسانیه و خب به نظر میاد امکان پذیر نیست به خاطر اینکه از اون ور دولت آمریکا، دولت روسیه، جمهوری اسلامی، دولت ترکیه، گروه های وحشی اسلامی از این ور اون ور همهشون هجوم کردن روی این مردم بدبخت سوریه. مردم بیگناه و جنگ سوریه که از اون جنگاست که مردم در واقع عادی موضوع حمله این نیروهای مختلفی که اونجا هستن یعنی هیچ فرق نمیکنه و خود دولت اسد محاصره کردن شهر و محلات و گرسنگی کشیدن گرسنگی دادن به مردمی که از وسائل جنگ شه ولی در این حال متاسفانه تو تاریخ بشر جنگ های مشابه اینطوری بوده و یکی از چیز دلایلی رو به او یک از مسائلی رو که به جنگ پایان میده نقش مردم جهانی تو ویتنام به علی جنگ علیه ویتنام دیدیم تو جنگ های دیگه همون نقشه که مردم جهان میتونن بازی کنند با اعلام نفرت و سازمان یافته بر علیه این جنگ در واقع جنبش های زده جنگ بتونن این جنگ رو به پایان برسونن خب یه مشکل واقعی اینه که این اعتلاف های علیه جنگ مثل اونی که تو انگلیس هست که آدم حالش به هم میخوره وقتی حتی اسمش رو میاره اینه که اینا طرفدار جمهوری اسلامی طرفدار دولت اسد و به همین دلیل مثلا به زودی کنفرانسی دارن که خود جرمی کوربن قرار اونجا سخنرانی کنه همش در رابطه با اسلام حراسی و امپریالیسم آمریکا ولی یک کلمه در رابطه با اسد و سیاهی که تو سناری سیاهی که تو اون کشور به وجود اومده ب... یه بخشش به خاطر خود جمهوری اسلامی و سوریه رو اصلا حرفش رو نمیزنن در واقع اهمیت تو یه جنگ یه جنبش ضد جنگ سازمان یافته تو سرزر دنیا سازمان یافته دوباره سازمان یابی بکنه و به علیه جنگ به این شبش به شکلش باشه و خب این یک واقعا یه تراژدی انسانی این دوره ماست نیم میلیون آدم کشته شدن تو این پنج سال اخیر یازده میلیون آدم بی پناهن یا تو خود سوریه جابجا جا شدن یا فراری هن از خود سوریه و فرار دارن میکنن به کشورهای دیگه و میبینیم که وضعیتشون واقعا و خیمه تازگی گزارشی از نظارت حقوق بشر منتشر شده در رابطه واقعا وضعیت اصفناک پناهنده کودک در این کمپ های یونان آره و این در واقع این تبعیز قرار دادن پناهنده ها توی کشورهای مختلف داره شکلی رو به حالت عادی داره میشه بچه ها توی هلند تو دانمارک, دانمارک بچه ها رو از توی کلاس های مختلف نگه می دارن یکی از شهرهای دانمارک به اسم آرهاوس فکر کنم قرار الان کلاس های داشته باشن فقط برای پناهنده ها و نه فقط پناهنده ها بلکه کسایی که شهروند دانمارک هن ولی مادر پدرشون پناهنده یا مهاجر بوده که واقعا اصلا خیلی دیگه کار تبعیض آمیز و غیر قابل قبوله این کار این تبعیض شیوه تبعیض و علی پناهنده ها مهاجران یکی از در واقع وسائل جنایت دست راستی و به خصوص جنایت اسلامی تو ایران هم هفته گذشته توی شیراز مشاهده کردیم که یه سری رو ظاهرا دستگیر کردن به خاطر جرائم ولی ظاهرا همشون افغانی بودن و اینا رو با چشم بسته وسط شهر توی قفس کردن و 
تو ملعه عام توهین بهشون کردن و البته سر صدای خیلی زیادی رو به پا کرده و مردم به هم در افغانستان هم در ایران به این قضیه اعتراض کردن به طوری که جمهوری اسلامی اصلا اومده دست پاشو گم کرده گفتن اصلا افغانی نبودن و خب دقیقا یعنی میبینیم که تو خود فلوجه وقتی که داعش و فراری دادن بغل دادگاه های داعش هم از این نوع قفص ها وجود داشته برای زندانیانشون همون نوع قفص هایی که جمهوری اسلامی هم برای شهرفندان افغانی مثلا هم کار میکنه دقیقا جمهوری اسلامی داعش عربستان سعودی همه کاراشون شبیه همه هفته گذشته با کیت پورتیس بود رئیس انجمن سکلرستای بریتانیا مصابی داشتیم در جوار کنفرانسی که 150 همین سال تحسیس انجمن سکلرستای بریتانیا رو جشن میگرفت مصاحبه جالبیه با ما باشید Keith Portis Wood, it's wonderful to have you on our program Well I'm delighted to, to, to appear on it Thank you and we're just so pleased that it's the 150th anniversary of the NSS, the National Secular Society Tell us what that means practically for British society and for the world in general Well the National Secular Society has been surprisingly influential in a lot of ways sometimes not ones that would be understood or expected today um, but it hasn't been a monolithic organization there's always been a little bit of tension between people who want to be more atheistic and other people who want to be more uh, human rights orientated or Um, looking for an equal society for everyone regardless of their belief or none. Um, and what will surprise a lot of your, uh, those watching this program was that it was quite early in the uh, NSS's history that they were looking at personal rights and, and what have become human rights and it's an area that the religious often try and pretend was something that they invented. And, I, and certainly in, in, from social history terms, it does look that we were very much at the forefront of that. And uh, another big misconception is that the National Secular Society was kind of born in, in, in 1866 as, uh, and then had branches, but it didn't. It was actually, it came out from the bottom with local societies that had um, Uh, secular agendas, often Owenite, um, Carlisle people, and, and a lot of interesting and subtly different organizations. And one of the things that united them um, was uh, freedom of expression um, and, and indeed very often um, a lot of impatience about the imperiousness of the established church. But I was always struck by how many of them actually had their own premises. Why did they have their own premises? Because the established church was so dreadful in, in stifling their freedom of expression. They actually put pressure on landlords and people in charge of public buildings to uh, forbid them to let to it. So to be able to express ourselves, we actually had to have these, these, uh, these, these many buildings, one of which still remains in Leicester. Um, and, and my favourite picture of, of Bradlaw is, is of one of him um, in Devonport, I think it was, on a boat just outside the low tide area and the jurisdiction of the of the local police and you can see the local police in the background looking greatly displeased that Bradlaw was standing on this boat addressing a large crowd. Ah, so ex-Muslims should start <laughs> having events on boats. <laughs> yes, absolutely, just offshore. But it tells us a lot about the climate that there was there. So, um, as well as human rights. Another aspect that would be surprising was that Bradlaw Uh, and Annie Besant were very much involved with contraception. Uh, now, there wasn't a problem with contraception as long as it wasn't for the masses. And their great crime, 
and, and indeed they did, uh, was the subject of legal action, was a leaflet called The Fruits of Philosophy, which is obviously a euphemism, um, and was, I think, a sixpenny uh, leaflet uh, I, available to, to, to everyone of, of whatever class. And that really was something that they were hated for more than for the uh, for the atheism and, 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 and certainly in Radlow's case for his republicanism and so um, that uh, it was, it, we find it difficult to understand why there should be so much adverse reaction to that today but, but it was encapsulated by someone who said oh to, to have used contraception uh, with your wife is, like, is to treat her like a whore uh, and that's something that we find very difficult to understand now. But as with so many things, they were so much ahead of their time. And that's never a comfortable position to be in. And, and this conference you have, this is to celebrate your 150th anniversary. Why the slogan, Living Better Together? Well, uh, I, I referred to the subtle differences between uh, the, the, the founders, uh, particularly... Uh, Bradlaw, who concentrated more on on atheism uh, uh, and republicanism and, and, and radicalism, um, and that's understandable given the overbearing uh, power of the church at that uh, that time. And I, uh, but there was also Holyoke, who was very much more into make, looking for an equal society where everyone was was. Uh, valued and, and not discriminated against but on the grounds of their belief or not. Very much more the way that the National Secular Society has evolved in recent years. Because we've come to the conclusion that just trying to persuade people that God doesn't exist or, or that, their, room, that their, their beliefs are illogical or, or um, something similar. It, 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 A is that it doesn't succeed and B we're not sure it actually achieves anything. Um, they can, as far as we're concerned, people can believe what they like, provided that it doesn't adversely impact anyone else. Um, and, uh, and that opens us to a much broader uh, group of people, included that we've, we've got a, even a vicar uh, in our membership now. And, um, and so that's, that's a, a relatively modern development that, that, that we, uh, but harping back to the beginning, which is really uh, plays into the title that we chose uh, for today's event. And also, I mean, it, it's interesting, 150 years, but the work is still so relevant today, isn't it? It's sometimes worrying about just how similarly relevant it is, um, both to, to the original work uh, and, and another golden era of the NSS was in the 1960s, well, 50 years ago, um, where they had a secular education week and they were arguing about the thought for the day and the exclusion of non-believers from that all right it was a different name of program but it's exactly the same issue and it's a little depressing that 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 we've had we've fought so long on these issues and the establishment has uh, has stuck so uh, rigidly and and, and uh, has refused to, to uh, move despite really good arguments and, and one of those uh, was to do with um, compulsory acts of worship in, in, in schools and that's something we've been arguing against you know, for, forever um, and, and in, in the, with the new uh, conservative government with their first education act we pushed that very very hard to the point that uh, the bishops ran back to I Court Gove and said hey they're winning they're winning please help us and he like a lot of people uh, the secretaries of state for education before him said don't worry we won't let them win and yet it was just last month that the United Nations uh, issued uh, a recommendations to the UK government to say that that should stop and that children should be able to choose themselves to whether to be able to withdraw from it, another big point that we've made. Uh, so again, we've been ahead of our time and uh, the United Nations thinks we're right but we have this intransigent government and it doesn't always matter which uh, hue the government is. There is a kind of uh, 
subservience to religion um, from both the main parties. Um, and I think they don't quite realize that, that the, the, certainly the Christians can't deliver votes for any one party, and I don't think they have the religious clout. The NSS has just published a manifesto for change. Can you tell us what the main points are in this manifesto? We wanted to say something detailed and positive about about secularism and what it meant, because the, there is a great deal of ignorance about what secularism means. And I think that our, uh, those, particularly in religious organizations who uh, feel uncomfortable about secularism because it quite often clips their wings, uh, very often deliberately misrepresent it. So we thought it was a good idea to set out positively what secularism meant. So, for example, we were particularly concerned to say uh, what the impact of secularism would be on education, because education is the place where uh, the absence of secularism most impacts on the average person. And, for example, uh, the, re admission to these publicly funded um, schools, uh, representing a third of the, of the schools in the country, can be uh, discriminated on religious grounds. And uh, as bad also that the teachers um, can be discriminated against on religious grounds, if they're not of the faith of the school or they're non-religious. Now, how religious do you have to be to teach science or languages or the arts? Uh, you don't at all, and it's just pure discrimination. And when it's publicly funded uh, institutions, it's doubly bad, um, and on such a scale. Um, we also wanted to reaffirm our historic uh, support for freedom of expression, which is the fount of democracy, uh, which has been a long-standing National Secular Society uh, objective going right back to the beginning. Um, we wanted to express too our concerns about the continuing attacks on the law to increase the elements of religious exemptions, um, so-called conscience clauses. Uh, and uh, we, not so long ago, went to the European Court of Human Rights uh, to argue against evangelical Christians trying to get religion at the top of a hierarchy of rights for example, to be able to discriminate uh, against gay people, whether uh, in, in um, counselling or in uh, uh, marriage, uh, civil marriage, which is absolutely outrageous. And so we won those cases, uh, and that it was really very important that we that we did that. And finally, we we wanted to take a, a look at the United Kingdom uh, in the public sphere and the, the, uh, the big ceremonies that take place that are extraordinarily religious still. Uh, and the, the biggest of those is the accession of the head of state, the coronation of the new monarch. And that is actually a religious service and there is no other Western country where the act of succession which should be something to unite the whole country and an opportunity to unite the whole country where everybody's there on an equal basis is still at an Anglican uh, religious service um, and to give you a uh, an idea of the relevance of Anglicanism on an average Sunday there is only between one and two percent of the population who are sitting on an Anglican pew. So for the for that to be the basis of the accession of the uh, of the monarch um, it, it is quite dreadful. Okay, thank you so much. Congratulations, and here's looking to another 150 years for the NSS. Uh, well, let's hope <laughs> our job is done. But I suspect yes. that uh, that uh, that's rather optimistic. But thank you very much thank indeed, Mary. And I'd like also to say how much I appreciate uh, Bread and Roses and what a wonderful uh, service it that it that provided through you. 
um, and, and how interesting the programmes are and I'm sure they're very much appreciated by your enormous audience. Thank you. امیدوارم از مصاحبه با کیت پورتیوس وود رئیس جامعه سکلر سکلرسی بریتانیا خوشتون اومده باشه به نظر نکات خیلی مهمی رو مطرح کرد برای من اون چیزی که مرا به فکر رسید این بود که اون اوایلی که جامعه سکلر به وجود اومد تاسیس شد تمرکزش روی آتیزم و مبارزه علیه مذهب بود به خصوص به خاطر اینکه نقش مسیحیت توی بریتانیا خیلی بالاتر بود و الان اینو منو به یاد مبارزه علیه اسلام در حالی که خب اسلام سیاسی یه رکن اصلی توی دنیاست میبینیم که انتقاد از مذهب و اسلام هم اهمیت ویژه‌ای برای آدمای مثل ما خیلی داره توی دنیا هم روزی اهمیت داره مبارزه برای مذهب عقاید مذهبی خیلی مهمه به خصوص امروز ولی نکته مهمی رو که کیف مطرح میکنه اینه که سکولاریسم به عنوان یک ایده به عنوان یک سنت به عنوان یک شیوه تنظیم رابطه تو جامعه همه رو موازبت میکنه و در واقع حقوق همه رو حفظ میکنه چه کسایی که مذهبی باشن چه کسایی غیر مذهبی باشن دقیقا. کسایی که آتیست باشن اعتقاد داشت باشن و داشته باشن میگه جامعه باید یه مکانی باشه که همه بتونن به شکل مساوی استفاده بکنن و مذهب جایی توی دولت و چیزای اجتماعی نداشته باشه فتوای احمقانه این هفته از هندوستان و یه فتوای خیلی مهمیه بسیار بسیار مهمه لطفاً گوشاتون رو خوب تیز کنین که مبادا کارهای حرام انجام بدید ایشون نمیدونم مفتی فلانی فلانی علی نظری قادری از درگاه علا حضرت بریلی در هندوستان در هندوستان ایشون گفتن که دقیق بگین چیزا رو بگن نه خیلی باید دقیق گفت درست شکایت میکنن ایشون گفتن که مناظره تلویزیونی حرامه یه از کجا میدونه مناظره مگه نگاه کرده اینجوری نگاه کرده من فکر کنم خودش رفته توی مناظره تلویزیونی بحث و باخته گفته در چه کافی همه تلویزیون اصلا حرامه ت... میدونی بحث جا هستن که این جنات اسلامی تیوی... یه تلویزیون میدونزم و بسر با چوش رو میکنم تلویزیون میشه کتک زدن که تلویزیون داغو میکنم با سنگ بعد جور میبازن بعد میان تلویزیون بدبخت رو میزنن نمیفهمه که باید بحث درست بکنه منطق باید داشته باشه وقتی منطق نداره اینجوری میشه دیگه فتوا منتشر میکنه محفاره جمع میکنه هیشکی بهت گوش نمیده فقط بهت میخنده محفاره جمع میکنن برو یه کار درست حسابی بگیر آخه مرد درست حسابی یاد بگیر بحث کن <laughs> لحظه زیبای زندگی این هفته ما از دو زن جوان در ایرانه که دارن با واقعا شوق و علاقه موسیقی میزنن این این زیبایی این لحظه اینه که تو جامعه ای در اتفاق میفته که زنا رو تشویق برای موسیقی نمیکنه دولت و جریانات حاکم تو ایران واقعا حتی قدقن میکنه در خیلی مواقع دقیقا آینده جامعه ایران رو این جوان ها رقم خواهند زد و این ما رو میاره به آخر برنامه من. بله دوست داریم با همین ویدیو خیلی زیبا برنامه رو تموم کنیم پس همینجا بزا خدافزی کنیم و امیدواریم که شما رو دوباره هفته آینده ببینیم به امید دیدار
Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or web comics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream, and in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.